Welcome back to my intro to After Effects part two. Today we're gonna be diving deeper into animation, masking, and then exporting your final product when it is done, which is a stinger transition like this. So stick around and I'm gonna show you exactly how to create that in this part. Let's get right into it. Hey guys, what's up, it's Bravity, and welcome back to another video here on my channel. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. So welcome back to part two. If you guys did not know, this is my intro to After Effects series that I'm doing in two parts. If you have never touched After Effects, you should be able to create this stinger transition after today's part if you already watched part one. If you have not seen part one, I'll link it up in the corner in this corner right here, and there'll be a link in the description to part one so you can watch that and then come back to this video and learn how to make a stinger transition. So in the first part, we made a really cool animation animated background. Today's stinger transition is going to be very simple with all the stuff you learned in the last video. So go watch that one first, come back to this one, and we're gonna get a little bit more advanced. I'm gonna show you how to create stuff like this. So without further ado, let's jump into After Effects and take a look at how to create this stinger transition from scratch. All right, guys, so here we are inside of After Effects. If you watched the first episode, the first part, all this stuff should look fairly familiar. You kind of learned what all the areas of After Effects is. And here is the stinger transition that I just created that we're gonna be recreating inside of After Effects. So we're just gonna go ahead and create a new composition. Remember, go up to new or composition and then new composition right there. Go ahead and leave it at 1920 by 1080 because that is the typical HD video size. And we're gonna call it stinger just like that. Hit okay. And now it's time to begin building the stinger. If you notice, I have some lines in my composition right here. That is because I've got my title and action safe on. It just kind of helps you line up things when you're building animations. And that is this button right down here. You can turn on title and action safe. So you might see this, but I like to turn them on when I'm creating stinger transitions because I use the lines to line things up. And you'll see that here in a minute. So what we're going to do is we're going to create our initial background. So we're going to go up to layer, new, and then solid. Remember, we want to just create an entire background in one solid color. And I want it to be like a nice dark gray like that hit okay and there we go we got a nice dark gray solid now it's time to add some pops of color and begin the animation so i want to create another new solid let's create another new solid here go up to the same layer and solid and now we're going to create a uh, doesn't really matter actually we're going to create just a red solid and hit okay and the reason it doesn't matter is because we're going to recolor it using the fill effect i already have it typed out over here in the effects you'll remember we talked about the fill effect in the last episode so to change the color of our solid here i actually want to bring in my logo so I've got my logo here already inside the composition I'm gonna scale it down a bit kind of just like that and we're gonna make the solid match my logo so let's go ahead and drop the fill onto our red solid and we're gonna go up here to where we are in the effects controls remember it's next to your project here if you don't see it if you don't see effects controls it should automatically open but if you don't see it go up to window and you can turn them on down here you'll see effects controls red solid it is checked so turn it on there go into your effects controls and we can select our fill settings so we're going to make it this blue color by hitting this little eyedropper here we can select anything inside of after effects and make it whatever color we want so we're going to select the blue of our logo there and now we've got a blue solid and i'm going to actually now duplicate the solid by hitting Control d or command d on a mac and that's going to duplicate my red solid down here. And on this top one, we're going to go back up to the fill. And we're actually going to hit the eyedropper again. And we're going to make the second one the purple or pinkish in my logo. So now we've got a blue solid and we've got a pink solid inside of our composition. So let's go ahead and begin animating. We'll do the blue first. So I'm going to go ahead and hide the pink layer just like that. We're going to go ahead and grab the blue solid and let's begin animating them to come in diagonally. So the diagonal I want them to come in on is 45 degrees. I want them to come in at a 45 degree angle. So the way I'm going to do that, I'm going to hit the drop down here. We're going to go down to our transform tools. And remember, here's where we do all of our animation stuff. We got the rotation here and this little rotation number is the degrees. So if we set it to 45, you'll see that the entire comp or the entire solid rotates 45 degrees. We can kind of stretch it out so it fills the entire composition, but we can move that around however we want now so we're actually going to move it completely off the composition because that's where we want it to start we want it to come in from off the composition so at the beginning drag our playhead to the beginning we want the blue solid to be off the composition 
Now what we want to do is we want to keyframe the position. Remember, keyframing is how you animate. We want the position to change because it's coming in. So we're going to hit the little stopwatch next to position. And we're going to move forward uh, maybe about 30 frames so we can move our playhead forward. And we're going to go ahead and move our blue solid in. And this is going to automatically create a new position keyframe for us. So let's move it in. And let's move it into like right in the center. So you see this little X is the center. If we move it into right in the center of the X, just like that, that will be the center of the composition. So if we hit play, we should see the blue solid just comes in like that. There we go. We have gotten animated in blue solid, but now it is time for me to show you how to make your animations look a bit better. So we covered all this in the first episode, how to animate something, but we're going to make it look a bit nicer. And the way you do that is by messing with the speed graphs. So you'll see it just comes in all bland and the same speed the whole time and we can make that look a little bit more exciting by selecting both of our keyframes by drawing a box over them we're going to right click we're going to go to keyframe assistant and we're going to select easy ease this is going to ease it into the animation so it slows into the animation and then when the animation finish it kind of slows down instead of just coming to a hard stop but we can actually mess with that a bit further by selecting them again and hitting this little graph button up here the graph editor so if you click that it should open up the speed graph if it does not right click in the blank part of the graph and you might be on the value graph here it might look like this right click and go to speed graph you want to edit the speed graph and here is where we can set the animation speeds throughout the whole animation this is getting a little bit advanced but it's by far the best way to make your animations look really clean so what we can do is we can grab this little node down here and when we click it it's going to turn yellow and it should give us a little handle here we can grab it. and if you grab the handle and just drag completely sideways you'll see it draws a new shape on our graph so what this is saying is it's going to start out really fast because it goes really up really high really fast and then you'll see it kind of slows down it comes to a nice gradual stop using the graph so this would mean it goes in fast and then comes out slow if we drug this back to the beginning and then did it this way this would mean it goes in slow and then it goes whoop really fast so it starts slow and then it finishes fast but we actually want it to go the other way we want it to start fast and then finish slow so now if we play this you're going to see it goes and then slows down. So it comes in fast and then comes to a stop. Comes in fast and then comes to a stop. That's exactly what we want right there. So now let's do that with the pink solid. So turn on the pink solid. We're gonna go ahead and cancel our drop down here, drop down into our pink solid, drop down in the transforms tool, rotate it 45 degrees, position it in place. We actually gotta extend it out so it goes over the whole composition. Position it in place. We can actually start from here this time. So let's go ahead and start from the middle, just like that. Move forward a couple frames so the blue gets there. So you'll see they meet in the middle, nice and perfect. So we're gonna go ahead and drop down our blue solid to make sure we're matching our keyframes perfectly. So you see we got the keyframes here for the blue one. We wanna make sure we're putting the pink keyframes in the exact same place. So let's go to right here where this keyframe is and add the same position keyframe up here on our pink solid. Go back to the beginning and move this guy completely off the composition. So he keyframed it backwards. We started for where we wanted it to be, and then we moved it out instead of starting out and moving in. But it's going to play the exact same, but you're going to see that they move different, and that is because we haven't edited the speed graph of the pink one yet. So like I did before, select both of these by drawing a box, right-click on one of the keyframes, keyframe assistant, easy ease, and now we're going to, with them selected, go to the speed graph, click our little node and drag it this way so it starts fast and then goes slow and now let's play it and you'll see the animations now match perfectly and they meet in the center at the exact same time so we are well into creating the stinger transition we've already created a really cool animation that covers up our screen when the scene cut is going to happen but you'll notice we've got this gray solid in the background and that doesn't work for having a stinger transition it needs to be over a transparent background so what we're going to do is we're actually going to go to where these close up kind of just like that and right when they close up that's where we want the gray solid to appear we don't want it to appear until the screen is properly covered so the way we're going to do that is we're going to go to where they're closed right here we're going to click on the gray solid and we're going to hold down control shift and d so kind of like duplicating not control d control shift d and you'll see that's going to split our layer right where our playhead is and we can go ahead and delete the beginning of our gray solid so now there is no gray solid here you see it's a transparent background but then once they close that gray solid is now there but now we're going to reveal the gray solid by moving the blue and pink layers out to reveal the gray solid so 
let's go back into our animations for our position here. And what we can do is we can move forward a couple frames. So as you can see, we're on our keyframes. We can move forward a couple frames like this and hit this button over here to add keyframes where it is right now. So this means that it's just going to sit stagnant because we have the same keyframe here and the same keyframe here. No motion took place between those two keyframes. So nothing happens here. They just chill and they do nothing. But then we can move forward a little bit further and let's go ahead and grab both of our solids and move them out to the corners just like this. I'm going to line them up with this little box right here so that I know they're pretty close. So let's grab this one now and let's move it and line it up with the box just like that. So now they're pretty much lined up perfectly and we've now got this keyframe pulling them out just like that. So they come in through this keyframe. They sit and do nothing between these two keyframes, and then they come out through this keyframe. And you'll see these already are shaped like an hourglass, and if we select them, they've already got the speed graph edited for us because we edited them in the first animation we did. So when we create the new animations, it can edit the speed graph for us the second time. So we can actually go in and change this speed graph if we don't want this one to animate in a special way, but we do. We want to leave it how it is. So let's go back out of the speed graph, and let's play our animation here. So it goes whoop, whoop. So it opens up and reveals that gray solid because we had the gray solid appear while they were closed. So we got it coming in. It freezes for a little bit. It freezes for just a couple frames just so the animation doesn't go so fast. And then it opens back up. And what we want to do is we want to reveal our logo as well. So when it's about to open up, let's go ahead and collapse these. We want our logo to animate in. So right when it's about to open up, right about here, let's have our logo start. So we're going to go ahead and select our logo layer. And we're going to go ahead and drop down into the transform tools. And this time we want to animate the scale and the rotation the scale is how big it is and the rotation obviously is the rotation so right here at this point of the animation we want the logo to be non-existent we want it to be really small to the point where it's just nothing and then we want it to scale into what it is right now so since we've got the logo already in the position we want we're going to animate this backwards so we created our keyframes here we're going to move forward a couple frames just like that we're going to set some more keyframes using these buttons right here and then that's telling it we want it to look like that at this point so now we can hit these little arrows and these little arrows will take Take us back to our old keyframes and now we can scale this down and rotate it because we know the keyframes are already here for where we want it to be so the keyframes here we want it to rotate like this so we can grab our rotation tool we want it to rotate like that and then we want to scale it down to zero so our scale here we can just go ahead and type zero and now you see our logo is non-existent and it's going to scale in and rotate just like that beautiful but it doesn't look that great and it doesn't look that great because we didn't edit our speed graph. So let's go ahead and select all of our keyframes here. And we can do all of these all at once. Right click on one of the keyframes. Easy ease. Just like that. And let's go ahead and have these all selected. Go into our speed graph here. And if you want to edit all these at the same time, you just draw a box over our little node down here. And we can grab all of them at the same time and move them on the graph just like that. Let's go back out and let's take a look at how that logo animates in now. Look at that. That is such a clean and smooth logo animation. That is beautiful. So that is the beginning of our stinger transition. That's how it's going to enter in on our stream. And it hasn't taken that long at all. So now to animate this out, we're going to be masking a circle to go out of the center because I think that is a really cool way to exit a stinger transition. So we want to apply a mask to this entire stinger transition all at once and the way we're going to do that is we want it to be all one layer so if you remember from the first video the first part we're going to select all of our stuff down here all of our layers right click go to pre-compose and we're going to name it whatever we want let's call it stinger wow that was horrible stinger done and now if we hit enter boom we've got the stinger done we've got this entire animation all in one layer and that allows us to apply a mask to just this entire thing all at once without worrying about a bunch of separate layers. So once it animates in just like that, we want it to animate out with a circle. So let's go up to our masking tools here. And if we select our masking tools by holding down the click, we can go to our ellipse tool instead of our rectangle tool. So we need to draw the circle in the center for our mask. But before we draw it, we need to make sure our layer is selected like that. Because remember, if it's not selected, it's going to create a new shape. But if it is selected, it's going to create the mask that we want, as you can see. So we're going to make sure we are selected. We're going to click right into the center 
using our little title action safe cross here and we're going to click and hold down shift and then we're also going to hold down control and that is going to make a circle right in the center just like that so let's make a circle just kind of like that right there and we are going to animate the mask expansion. So as you can see, it created our new mask drop down down here. We drop down into mask, drop down into mask one. And if we adjust our mask expansion that we talked about just briefly in the first part, you're gonna see that it will shrink our circle and it will grow our circle. And this is exactly what we want, but we don't want it to be revealing our stinger like this. We want it to be taking away our stinger. So like we discussed in the last part as well, we're gonna go from add and we're gonna change it to subtract. So it's cutting a circle out of our stinger instead of showing the stinger inside of the circle. So this is the animation we want right here. We want it to go and we want it to disappear just like that. So we're gonna move the mask expansion until the mask is non-existent, just like that. So negative 280 is what it is for me. So we're gonna go ahead and move just like this. Just keep dragging this way until the mask is pretty much gone. And then we're gonna add the keyframes for the mask expansion. So let's hit this little stopwatch here. Let's move forward a couple frames just like this. And then let's go ahead and move the mask expansion back up until it's completely transparent and we have no more of our stinger showing just like that. And we can go ahead and play that now. And look at that. Look how cool that looks. It just goes whoo, from the center. That is such a cool style. But once again, we can make this look better. So let's select our keyframes. Let's right click keyframe assistant, easy ease into our speed graph. And this time, instead of doing our normal starting out fast, and then going slow, I'm actually gonna drag this back to the beginning and we're actually gonna start out slow and go fast. When I'm animating stuff in, I like to go fast and then slow down, but when I'm animating stuff out, like the circles going out like this, I like to start out slow and then go fast. So let's take a look at what this looks like now all together. Let's go ahead and add an out point by hitting in. We'll cover that more in just a second. And this is our stinger transition. Look at how clean that is. I think we could actually slow our animation down a little bit by expanding how long is in between our keyframes here. And let's play this again now. Look at that stinger transition right there. That is clean and ready to go into your Twitch stream right now. And it can be created from scratch that easy. After watching these two parts, you can create a stinger transition just like that that easy. These are the types of transitions I create for all the packs that I create for you guys. And this is how you do it. <laughs> it's this simple, but now it is time to export it and that is going to be a bit of a challenge if you've never done it before So I'm going to show you the settings that you need to export So I added an out point you can see this little highlighted area This is what it's going to export and the way you do that is by hitting B on your keyboard So B for beginning and then N for end so like N for end I know it doesn't really make sense But that's how I remember it N for end and B for beginning You just want to make sure you place it right at the beginning of your animation and then right when it's gone Right at the end of your animation and that is what you're going to export make sure your composition is selected here You can see this blue line going around this box and you see that blue line shifts to whatever box you are clicked on You want to make sure that blue line is on your layers on your composition down here before you export or you're not going to get the export that you want so make sure you're selected down here and you're going to go up to composition and then add to render queue that is how you render things inside of after effects that's how you get them outside of after out of after effects and into a file that you can actually use is by adding it to the render queue and rendering it so here for render settings i just leave this at best settings right here and where it says lossless in blue you just want to click on that and under format it might be avi if you have a pc but it might already be quicktime if you're working on a mac and you want it to be quicktime so quicktime format is a mac based format and it can't be opened on a pc just in the explorer just viewing it you need to bring it into an editor or convert it into another format but QuickTime is one of the best files to export outside of After Effects, so I always recommend selecting this AVI and setting it to QuickTime. AVI is a massive file. QuickTime just kind of brings the file size down a little bit. And then this is the most important part to a Stinger transition. So if you come down here to Video Output where it says Channels, it says RGB, you want to change this from RGB to RGB plus Alpha. An Alpha channel is the transparent background everyone knows and loves. No more creating green screens and then keying it out on your effects. You just need an Alpha background and that is a transparent background so that the Stinger can actually go over your footage and over your stream so rgb plus alpha is what you need to have the transparent background 
go ahead and hit OK. And then where it says Output to and whatever you named your composition, it's Stinger and Blue for me. You can click on that and that's going to open up your Explorer and you can name your Stinger whatever you want and then save it wherever you want on your PC and you hit Render right here and you are done. It's going to play through it just like that. And it's going to render it and it's done. It's going to create a little boom sound effect when you're done. And that's pretty much it. You've got a quick time of the stinger that you want to create. And that's pretty much it. You've got a quick time file for the stinger that you just created. You can then take this and you can convert it to a WebM or you can export a WebM directly out of After Effects using the WebM plugin. There's tons of videos online showing how to install the WebM plugin into After Effects and into Premiere Pro. And you can export directly out as a WebM instead of a QuickTime file. But that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you would like me to go even more in depth into After Effects and teach you guys this simply how to make cool stuff, let me know down in the comments. I know a lot of times in my typical videos I'm going really fast when I'm creating things and it's just because I don't want to have constantly 20 minute videos for you guys to watch. I want to keep them around 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes every once in a while and to do that I've got to move pretty fast through After Effects but every once in a while it's fun to create these ones that are nice slow paced where I show you every single click that I'm doing so that you guys can follow it no matter what skill base you have. If you've never touched After Effects my goal is that you can download the program, buy the program, jump into it and you can create some awesome stuff for your stream just like that. So if you want more very deliberate and slowed down videos on how to make some cool stuff like this, let me know down in the comments and I'd love to keep going. So hop on into After Effects. If you've been thinking about buying After Effects because you want to create some cool stuff, I highly recommend it because after watching these videos, you should be confident that you can make some awesome stuff just like this. So let me know what you thought of this video down in the comments and I will see you in the next one.